This is my hot sauce brand. I'm gonna go and tell you the whole story. It all starts with the low FODMAPs community. For people that don't know, they have a huge Reddit group. And this is for people that have ideas, but more specifically that they cannot eat specific things. So I cannot eat onion, garlic, and other things. When I moved to America, I wanted hot sauce, but all of the hot sauce that I was going to buy had either onion and garlic, and I wanted to find an alternative. So I discovered this group in Reddit. There's around 70,000 people right now. It's big, but not that big. I follow this group and I was always thinking like, hey, how can I create hot sauce for me and for everyone in this group. I work in the food industry, so I know this term called white label or private label. In white label or private label, what happens is that you, like this is you, you have a recipe, but you don't have a factory. So you go to a factory, they will create the recipe for you. In this case, it was the hot sauce, uh, but usually like they do many other things. And then they give you the hot sauce, and then you are able to sell the hot sauce, which is perfect. Private label or white label is like that. You have a recipe or an idea, contact a factory, they make the product for you, and then you just sell it as a distributor. This is a super easy way to start because you don't need a huge factory, and this is good to test if there's enough buyers. And then if your business grows a lot, then you're gonna buy a factory, but this is a super easy starting point. Because I work in the food industry, I know that this was always an option. So I was looking for factories that would make hot sauce, and I was searching and searching and searching, but I didn't do much, that was it. Then I went to the casino with a friend of mine and I lost $400. I felt so dumb. I felt so bad for losing $400 in one night. And I remember thinking, this took many months, like from the time that I wanted to do the hot sauce to the time I went to the casino. I remember thinking that night at the casino, like, man, I would have used those $400 to make my hot sauce business. Like that would have been enough to buy one batch of hot sauce with no onion and no garlic. So that night, I remember I came back from the casino, let's say midnight, I went to the computer and I ordered the hot sauce, like the first batch. So I spent $400 more. Yeah, because I was... I was feeling bad, so I needed to do something to solve it. So I was like, I'm going to use the same money that I wasted. I'm going to find a way to invest it in something productive. And this was bringing my idea that I've been having for a long time to reality. So I spent $400 finding a place and buying the first batch of hot sauce with no onion and no garlic, which I wanted and was difficult to find. Yes, I know Tabasco is an option, but I didn't want Tabasco. It is way too strong. I want something different. I order it and then I waited for the product to arrive. Actually, it looks like this. This was the first, like the color has changed now because this is three years old, but this is the first bottle I ordered. Yeah, I, I created this label. I ordered the first batch of hot sauce. The next weekend after I ordered it, I went to a Panera and I told my wife, drop me in Panera and don't pick me up until I have this website to sell this hot sauce. Done. And I'm telling you absolutely everything. There's no market study, no research, no anything. I was simply just following a Reddit group, wanting a product, created a product with money that came out of guilt and received the product. I had no idea what I was doing. I had an LLC, so I just um, added to the LLC the possibility of being distributors. So I became a distributor of this. And then if there was a, a legal issue or any ingredient issue, like the problem would be with a factory because I'm just a distributor. So all of this simple way of making big business came because I was following, I follow Daniel Vasallo on Twitter. So this guy on Twitter has something that is called the small bets community. I was one of the first ones to join. This was three years ago. Now there's more than 5,000 people. What he encourages people to do is to have a small, small bets mentality, which means if you have a big idea, don't invest a lot in that idea. Just try to do it as simple as possible. And that's what I did. I bought the minimum batch that I could from this factory to get the hot sauce. And then I created a website in one Panera sitting down. I told my wife, drop me in Panera. I have to finish this today in order to do this as quick as possible. This means that I use stock pictures. I have no idea what I was doing, but I just wanted to launch it as quick as possible. And that night, something beautiful happened. This is the low FODMAP Reddit community. I posted, hey, I launched a hot sauce. I just need people to try it to give me reviews. That's it. That was the whole post. I went to sleep. The next morning, people not only texted me to try it, they also started buying. Like immediately, they started buying and buying and buying and buying. And this is why like the small, the small bets mentality is so good. This is something that took me in reality one weekend to launch and it started becoming viral in the community. This fine product market fits super quick. All of these sales, these sales that are $800 of sales, in reality, they happen the first day, but they happen in Gumroad, which is a different payment processor. Then I migrated the data to Shopify, so it's delayed. But all of these sales happen the night that I posted on Reddit. Like all of that happened the night that I posted on Reddit. So I went to sleep with this and, by, and I wasn't even selling the product. I was just saying who has reviews, like who can give me reviews. And the next morning I woke up to all of these sales, $800 in sales. And remember that I had paid $400 for the inventory and this was just part of the inventory. The thing is that this became viral. After a while of just posting, I was just posting in Reddit. That was my whole marketing strategy, just repl answering replies and doing that. The business went really good. I had spent $400 in the first batch and people were buying and buying and buying. The problem that I had is that I made a product that is super niche because not everyone likes hot sauce. And that product doesn't get repurchased a lot. People that buy hot sauce, they don't have to buy it in a, like every two, a year, two bottles a year. That is a lot of loyalty, you know? So if I would have made ketchup or something way with way more consumption, it would have been way better. And also that I did this for the low FODMAP community, which is a small community. So I combined a niche with a niche and I should have grabbed like a massive product with a niche, like ketchup for the low FODMAP community would have been a million dollar idea. The reality is that I discovered that this was super small and that's when I decided to try to sell it online. I had already sold a company online before, but that's for another video and it was a super cool experience. I created a micro acquired back in the day uh, account and boom, congrats on getting acquired. 
Adios Garlic was acquired. I decided to sell it after a year. This took absolutely no time at all. It was literally like I just created one product, like one Shopify store. It was so simple, so cool. I could have invested way more time to get more customers, but by the time that I discovered that mixing, like that hot sauce was the problem, like the margin was so slow, people don't need to buy a lot. Like I discovered like maybe I'm gonna sell this and start again. I sold it on acquired.com. Congrats on getting acquired, which was super cool for me. I received a hat, I was so happy for it. And it got acquired through Stuart. Like I in Texas decided to buy it and everything was great. This was one year of me having the company. It was actually nine months to be exact. And it was beautiful, I liked it. But I discovered that Stuart Stuart, the guy that bought it, like wasn't doing as much. It's not his fault. Yeah, we have different motivations. I was part of a low fat community. I knew the people that needed to buy this product and he just didn't. Not much was happening. And that's when I started sending him emails like this. Hey, what's happening? There's not much happening with Adios Garlic. Would you be interested in selling it back to me? I sent that in May of last year. And then we continue talking, July, October. It took one year of negotiation. Me saying like, man, you're not doing much. Can I buy it back? And I decided to buy it back. At the end, ah, well, I sold it to microquire and uh, make I made, I think I made between six thousand or eight thousand dollars. I think it was six thousand dollars cash and then two thousand dollars of inventory that I shipped him, something along those lines. Uh, well, I learned a lot in the process. Like the biggest nuggets of lessons here is the fact like I should not combine two niches. Like I should have not sell a niche product to a niche audience. That's the biggest lesson. And I sold it and then I bought it back. I bought Adios Garlic back. The problem here, and this is my fault, is that when I bought it back, the factory that was producing the recipe forced me to change the recipe. They were like, hey, we're removing this ingredient. We're no longer gonna carry this ingredient, so you have to change it. That's why the pictures that you see right now in the website are different than this product. Like similar but different at the end because it's a different recipe. Reviews were great. I do have to say like people really liked the, the product. Like it was beautiful. Let's take a look here. Yeah, this is so cool. Well, this is so weird. Like I don't know why this guy um, uploaded a picture to make like hot sauce with a cheesecake. This makes no sense, but I guess it's fun. I have no idea. But here you see people using it. This felt so great. Like this was pretty cool. All of this garlic has been extremely positive. I, I am so happy with the low FODMAPS community, with everything that I've done. I just believe that my mistake was that I grabbed a super low margin product, but still it's a positive story. Now where the story ends is that I bought this garlic back and we had to change the recipe. Now that we change the recipe people are not loving it as much as they used to like the other recipe so i don't know what to do that's why i made this video to narrow the whole story of how everything went down for my own memory in the future and now i'm in the process of, of either shutting this completely down or finding someone that can make a different recipe. Personally, I discovered that just adding jalapenos to the meal is perfect solution for people that have low FODMAP allergies. I am adding jalapenos to my meals instead of hot sauce, so I don't need this anymore. So I want to find a factory that is able to do a hot sauce that is only jalapenos and vinegar, and that's it. I, I would love that. And if that happens, then I'm definitely gonna launch this garlic with that new sauce, which I am sure that is gonna be the best product needed for this community. But once again, this was like a two hour a week business for me. It was for fun. It was extremely easy. And I learned so much. Yes, I ran some ads. I actually had success with a blog post. I did a lot of blog posts, like understanding keywords that could rank and one about bananas like are bananas low maps or not became super viral um, that gave me a lot of traffic but mostly most of the traffic came from reddit and i loved it i learned how to find product market fit extremely quick and understanding that product market fit was is not enough you need good margins and product market fit so this has been my adios garlic experience i loved it there were so many more lessons that if you have questions drop them in the comments below i'll be sure to answer all of them we'll see what will happen but for now i would call this a post-mortem adios garlic